welcome to the course on services marketing now we will start the third section of this course that is managing the customer interface now in this section we have uh, module uh, 20 to 29 and module 20 and 21 in these two modules we, we will be talking about designing and managing service processes we have talked about the module 20 and uh, today we will start discussing module uh, 21 so let us see what uh, uh, what are the things that we will be talking about in this module so we will explain necessity for service process redesign understand how service process redesign can help to improve service quality and productivity so the first is the necessity for service process redesign and then we will we will try to understand how it will improve service quality and productivity then we will understand levels of customer participation in service processes and familiarize with the concept of service customers as co-creators and implication of this perspective so there are two things that we will be talking about the first is about about the service provider and the second is these two relates to the customer then we will talk about understanding factors that lead customers to accept or reject new self-service technologies and know how to manage customer reluctance to change behaviors in service processes with respect to the adoption of SST. So, uh, and, and then we will talk about as, uh, as I have just uh, pointed out why customers they accept or reject uh, self-service technologies and then if the customers are, are reluctant or they reject the self-service technology then how the companies can change the behavior. Uh, so, the uh, be, uh, behavior in the service processes so that the reluctance comes down and uh, customers uh, may start using the new self-service technology. Now, let us start with the service process redesign. So, need for now, now uh, keep in mind that uh, in the first place in module 20 we have seen uh, the service process design and over a period of time there is a need to redesign these processes. So, that, that is why we are uh, we are talking about the service process redesign. Let us look at the need for this service process redesign. The first is service processes they become outdated over time and the second reason is a natural weakening of internal processes it keeps on happening all, uh, all the time whether in service or in product companies. So, there is a need to redesign service processes. So, in this figure this shows that healthcare can be redesigned to meet customer needs. So, here we are talking about how this, this uh, doctor is talking to the, uh, to the customer and so on and so forth. So, the whole idea is that we there is a need to keep on redesigning service processes. Now, symptoms that reflect need for uh, uh, processes re redesign. So, when do when there is a need for service processes redesign. So, what are the symptoms for that? A lot of information exchange. So, the first reason is a lot of information exchange is needed as the data available is not useful. So, the existing data is not useful and therefore, there is a need to, uh, to, uh, to gather lots of information. So, that is the first symptom of service process redesign. The second is a high ratio of checking or control activities to value adding activities. Now, here the ratio of this control activities is becoming greater as compared to the value adding activities in the processes. So, now you see that the company is spending more resources on control activities or checking activities rather than value adding activities. So, that is another symptom that the service process needs a redesign. The third reason is increased processing of exceptions. So, now in the in the first place the, the company has designed certain exceptions as we have seen in, uh, in, in module 20 they have designed certain exceptions in the process. Now, the third reason for this process re redesign is that the number of exceptions they are increasing and therefore, there is an increased processing of excep uh, exceptions. So, something uh, along the service delivery processes is going wrong because obviously, the customers needs and wants they keeps on changing. And the fourth reason is growing number of customer complaints about ineffective procedures. So, uh, and the one, one of the most obvious reason for service process redesign is the customer complaints that your procedures are ineffective and uh, you should do something about those processes. So, now when we are uh, looking at the service process re redesign, 
then let us also talk about how to go about improving quality and productivity. So, the re redesign efforts focus on achieving the following four key objectives. So, the, uh, in the last slide we have seen the symptoms for this uh, process redesign and then now we will talk about what are the key objectives uh, for this process redesign. So, the first is reduced number of service failures. So, when your service fail failures keeps on increasing, so that uh, service failures as uh, uh, we have talked about earlier is, is any delivery that does not meet, cu meet customer expectations. So, service, uh, service uh, failure can be because customer expectations have gone up or because there is some, uh, some, pro some problem in the processes. So, the first objective of this service process redesign is the reduced number of service failures. The second objective is reduced cycle time from customer initiation of a service process to its completion. So, now customers they are running short on time and they want the process to be completed uh, in lesser amount of time. Therefore, they uh, need to reduce the cycle time. The third is increase the productivity. And the fourth is, fourth objective of this service process redesign is increased customer satisfaction. So, these are the four objectives uh, which uh, should be achieved, uh, achieved when we want to go in for this service process redesign. Now, how this service process redesign happens? What are the steps in this service process redesigning process? The first is examining the blueprint with key stakeholders. So, in module 20, we have seen the flowchart and the, and the blueprints of the service uh, processes. So, the first step here in service process redesign is to examine those service blueprints which, uh, which will al also have the key st stakeholders looking at it at the same time. Eliminate non-value adding steps. Over a period of time as we, as we have mentioned earlier in this uh, module, some steps they become redundant. So, now there is a need to eliminate those non-value adding steps. The third step in this proce uh, process of service redesign is addressing bottlenecks in the process. So, there may be some bottlenecks, the waiting period has increased, so there is a need to, uh, to address these bottlenecks. And the fourth is shifting to self-services. So, these are the four steps in this processes. So, in some cases you can involve customers. For example, in quick service, service restaurants in, in, in McDonald's and so on and so forth, people are expected to bring their food and then uh, to stove away the, uh, the, the tray. So, then you, uh, the, so now uh, the fourth objective of this uh, service process redesign is that you shift some of the activities to the, cust uh, to the customer. So, that becomes sh shifting to self service. Customers do the service for themselves. Let us start with the first objective, examining the service blueprints with key stakeholders. So, you may recall that a blueprint is a, is a, is a flow chart of all these activities and it, uh, and it also has the time and, and the processes, what are the activities that will be happening in front of the customers, what are the backstage activities that keeps on happening all the time. So, this it will help in identifying problems in service process and discover ways to improve it. So, now various stakeholders, the customers, the employees, the front stage employees, the back stage employees. So, lots of people are looking at this blueprint. So, now this will help in identifying problems and discover how to improve on those processes. The second step is each of the stakeholders in the process, the customers and the uh, uh, frontline employees, the support staff and the IT teams should be invited to review the blueprint with the purpose of brainstorming for ideas on how to improve the process. So, now there will be lot of lot of ideas when uh, when every stakeholder is looking at this process, the customers will come up with some ideas, the front stage employees or the support staff, they will come up with some ideas on how to, how to streamline these processes. So, this involves identification of missing or unnecessary steps and changes in sequence. Then stakeholders, they also highlight ways in which developments in information technology equipment and new methods offer advantages. For example, Avis, Avis is the car rental company like we have those uh, Uber etcetera. So, Avis does research every year on what factors car renters care about the most. So, it breaks down the car rental process into more than 100 incremental steps. So, you see that this is a small process, but, uh, but even this is small process is broken down into 100 incremental steps and that include making reservations, finding the pickup counter, getting to the car, 
driving it, returning it, paying the bill and other associated activities. Because Avis knows customers key concerns, it claims it can quickly identify ways to improve their satisfaction while also driving the firm's productivity. So now when, when, the, when this company says that they know the, the, the customer's key concern and keep in mind that this, these key concerns may be changing over a period of time. So because this company knows the customer key concern, it, it, it can quickly identify ways to improve their satisfaction and at the same time increasing the productivity of the company. So what travelers most desire is to get their rental cars quickly and drive away. So the firm has redesigned its, its processes to achieve that goal. So this is the concern of the traveler that they should get their car quickly and this is how the, firm, uh, the company has redesigned the pro its processes. The second objective is to eliminate non-value adding steps. So now let us look at how to go, to go about doing, those, uh, doing that. So activities at the front end and back end processes of services can be streamlined with the goal of focusing on benefit producing part of the service encounter. So you see that now we are looking at this act front end and the back end activities and to streamline, the, uh, streamline those activities so that the service and encounter is benefit producing. Then the outcome of such process redesign typically includes increased productivity and customer satisfaction. For example, a customer wanting to rent a car is not interested in filling out forms, processing payments or waiting for the return car to be checked. So what he is interested is that he should get the car quickly and he can drive away in that car. So service redesign tries to eliminate, service redesign tries to eliminate such steps that customers view as non-value adding. So now these steps are to be look, looked from the customer's point of view, which steps are value adding and which steps are not value adding or what customers think as waste of time. The third thing is addressing the bottlenecks in this process. So bottlenecks and resulting customer waits are a feature of many service processes. So uh, as you may recall that in module 20 we have, see, we have marked, we have seen that they have marked wherever the, the customers have to wait. So it is a step in the service process with the lowest throughput rate that determines the effective capacity of the entire process. So when, once there is a bottleneck that will affect the whole of this process. So that is the biggest problem because at, at, uh, somewhere uh, along the process uh, uh, people, uh, uh, the, the waiting line that gets, uh, keeps on increasing. So determining the processing time and capacity for each step in the blueprint allows one to see the actual capacity available in each step. One way to identify bottleneck is to simply observe where customers have to wait. So the, where the customers are waiting that is uh, clearly a bottleneck which need and that needs to be addressed because that is a waste of time. And the fourth objective is shifting to self-service. Significant productivity and sometimes even service quality gains can be achieved by increasing self-service. So now with this self-service you can increase productivity because now uh, several, uh, several activities are done by the customer themselves and that will also sometimes uh, give greater service quality, better service quality. For example, decades ago, FedEx already aimed and succeeded in shifting more and more of its transaction from its call centers to its website, thus reducing the number of employees in its call center by tens of thousands of people. Just by shifting many processes from call center to the website, they were able to save so much by removing tens and thousands of people from the call centers. Now what does this, what does this customer participation in service processes means? So customer participation refers to the action and resources, action and resources supplied by customer during service production including mental, physical and even emotional inputs. So now the customers they are carrying out certain actions and they are also investing some resources and that may include the physical, mental and emotional inputs. And there can be various levels of customer participation.
the first is low participation level now we are like uh, keep in mind that we are talking about customer participation from two uh, angles the first is the action and the second is the resources so low participation means employees and system do all the work for example routine cleaning and maintenance visiting a movie theater and taking a bus etc so now here what the customers they have to uh, go to the bus stand they have to board the bus and they have to sit the rest of the thing are being taken care by the employees the second is moderate participation levels so customer inputs are required to assist the firm for example visiting a stylist filing tax return so now customers they go to the stylist they take a seat there and then they also have to give inputs about what kind of hair uh, they they want so that is moderate participation level the third is high participation level customers work actively with the provider to co-produce the service for example marriage counseling educational services so so the students have to keep on uh, keep on learning uh, learning what uh, the teacher is telling them and customers works under professional supervision in health related services so you, now you see that this is high level of participation there is a there is a person who is telling them how to do all this kind of stretching and yoga exercises and they have to uh, do it along with him now when customers as service co creators when customers they also co create the service so value is created when the customers and service providers interact during production consumption and delivery of the service so these are the three stages production consumption and delivery of the service so value is created when the customer and service providers they interact during these three process uh, these three stages service firms need to look at how customers themselves can contribute effectively to value creation firm needs to educate and train customers now the firm the task of the firm is is to educate and train the customers to contribute effectively to this value creation process because if they are not educated and trained then they may not be able to contribute effectively to this value creation process and instead of value creation it may lead to value value destruction so firm should focus on preventing custom customer failures if the customer fails if he is not uh, able to do what he is supposed to do then that is what uh, is called as customer fails then obviously that will lead to value destruction and that will be a problem for both the company and the customer now what are these self service technologies which are called as sts that is the ultimate form of involvement in service production customers undertake and act on their own using facilities system provided by the supplier so the facilities and systems are provided by the supplier and then customer they undertake a act they do some something on them by themselves so sst allows customer to produce a service without direct employee impl uh, uh, involvement so the employees are replaced by these facilities and systems and the, the customers uh, they interact with the technology rather than with the employees so example of this self service technologies they include automated banking terminals or we can say atms self checkout terminals at supermarkets as well as information based services such as banking research and even education then you can also have those web check-ins then there are some filling stations 
where you go, you fill your diesel or petrol tank and then you pay through your, through your credit or debit cards. Now, uh, let us look at the blueprint of a service, let us look at the blueprint of a self-service internet delivered banking process. So, companies can divert customers from using more expensive alternatives such as face to face contact with employees. Now, you see that it is always more expensive both for the company and the customers. This face to face contact is, is always more expensive for both the company as well as the customer because customers have to spend time to come to the facility. The company will have that kind of capacity, they should also have that parking spaces etcetera etcetera so that the customer can come. So, that is always a, 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 a expensive proposition. So, now what companies do is to divert customers from using this, uh, this, this face to face contact with the employees. So, and move on to the self service technology. So, this is the blueprint of a self service internet delivered banking process. Now, you see that uh, for a plain simple banking process, this is such a big, uh, big uh, blueprint. So, these two lines they show these are the front end uh, front stage and these are the back stage. As you may recall the front stage is what the customer sees and the back stage is what the customer does not see. And the, these things these are the customer decisions F represent the fail point, this, this, uh, this is the end of process, this is the beginning of the process. Then this W, uh, w says uh, waiting point. So, now this customer he logs to into the service. Now, that sends login information this, uh, then at the back end these are some internet banking terminals and back end systems at in the back end the login uh, they, they have to validate the login. Now, this is the fail point several times it says uh, it, it so happens that you log in and it says that. Uh, it is not successful. If it is successful then it then it moves man to present service options. So, uh, I suppose uh, most of you or many of you would have done that uh, internet banking. So, you may be aware of several things and then you uh, you select this customer loan information. Now, you see that the customer is able to see this, uh, the service options and uh, the loan information. Then you, uh, then the, these the, then they retrieve the loan information send, send the loan information and now this this is where the waiting time happens this is also a fail point so now see see that this is such an important area the, the, the telephone advice and the schedule meeting choosing advice option etcetera etcetera so this is such an important area that waiting uh, it is a waiting point and it is also a fail point and again this is a fail point this is again a fail point. So, in the, all this process there is one one waiting point and there are several three uh, three fail points and then this uh, service interface link uh, now this this at the end of the service this is happening again again uh, this is happening here also. Now, what are the customer benefits and adoption of self service technologies? So, multiple attitude drive customers intention to use a, a, a specific SST. So, what are these multiple attitudes? The first is overall attitude towards related service technologies. The second is attitude towards the specific service firms and its employees. So, it is generic that is towards the related uh, service technologies and it is also towards a specific form service firms and its employees. And then the overall perceived benefits, convenience, costs and ease of use customers see in using SSTs. So, what do they see? What is the benefit? How convenient it is? Whether it is reducing the cost and how easy it is to use? this self service technology. Now, there are several advantages of using this self service technologies. The first is greater convenience, it includes time, time saving, faster service, flexibility of timings. So, through 24 uh, it is available uh, 24 by 7 and location many ATMs. So, you can you do not have to go to a branch there are several ATMs and you can go there and they are available 24 by 7. So, customers love SSTs when they bail them out of difficult situations. 
often because SST, SST machines are conveniently located and accessible 24 by 7. Now, this figure shows the figure on this right shows a website is as close as the nearest computer or smartphone, making this option much more accessible than the company's physical sites. So, if you need cash urgently, would not you be glad that you can obtain cash at one of the many ATMs in town rather than having to hunt for a bank branch. So, now here you see that a man pays for a transaction with his mobile phone at an internet kiosk. That makes visiting companies online more convenient than going to the actual site. The second is that it leads to greater control over service delivery, more information and perceived level of customization and then it also leads to lower prices and fees involved. Now, what are the disadvantages and these this disadvantages they also lead to, uh, to, uh, to becoming barriers in the adoption of SSTs. So, customers hate SST when they fail. For example, self service, service machine are out of service. So, that is a pain point. Pin numbers are rejected, websites are down or tracking numbers do not work. So, the customers get frustrated by poorly designed technologies. For example, when they have difficulty negotiating a website or completing online registrations and forms. They get frustrated when they themselves make a mistake because the chances of making a mistake in SST are higher because there is no one to, to guide you at, at that point in time. So, for example, you have forgotten a password or you provide wrong information or simply hit a wrong button. So, several times you may hit, ent uh, so you may hit delete instead of uh, enter. So, customers may still blame service providers for not providing a simpler and more user friendly system. So, this is this is look at this figure and how this lady is irritated because something has gone wrong with this website or whatever she was doing. Lack of efficient service recovery systems. So, very few SSTs include effective service recovery systems. In case of system failure, there is no way to solve the problem on the spot. So, if an ATM is not working, nobody can do anything about it and it will take time to, to resolve that problem. So, customers may be forced to phone, email or make a personal visit to solve the problem. Next important step here is assessing and improving the self-service technologies. So, the first is that we have to assess how the current, how our SSTs are currently doing and then find ways to improve, improve those SSTs. So, Mary Jo Bittner, she, ha, she is author of a book uh, uh, on services marketing, she is and also, uh, also expert in this uh, service uh, marketing, suggest managers to test their SSTs by asking the following. The first question that the managers need to ask, does the SST work reliably? Firm must make sure that SST work as promised and the design is user friendly. So, in services this is very important, keeping the promises and also the design of that SST should be user friendly. For example, Southwest Airlines online ticketing system has set a high standard for simplicity and reliability. It boasts the highest percentage of online ticket sales of any airline and this is a clear evidence of customer acceptance. So, now you see that how successful their online ticketing system is because of the high standards for simplicity and reliability. So, any SST if it has to be successful it should be, it should be fulfilling two criteria the first is simplicity and the second is reliability. The second question that they need to answer is, is the SST better than the interpersonal alternative? So, this interpersonal alternative is always very good, but because it involves cost, so uh, companies they want to shift those processes to SST. So, the next important question that needs to be answered is, is the, S is the SST that we are using better than the interpersonal alternatives? So, if it does not save time or provide ease of access cost savings or some other benefits, then customers will continue to use 
the familiar interpersonal choice. Now you see that from the customer's point of view, it is always easier to, although it is expensive, but, but it is easier to go to the branch and uh, to, to go to the site, service company site and do and carry out the activities because there are people, employees who can help them in this process. So it is important that when the company is shifting all this interface to an SST, they should be sure of whether it is it provides ease of access and cost savings and some other benefits. Only then customers will, will shift to SST, otherwise they will continue with their earlier interpersonal, interpersonal choices. Amazon.com's success reflects its efforts to create a largely personalized yet efficient alternative to visiting a retail store, which has become the most preferred way of browsing and buying books today. Now, the third question that need to be answered is, if the SST fails, are systems in place to recover the same service? So when the, what happens when this SST, it fails? So it is critical for firm to provide systems, structures and recovery technologies that will enable prompt service recovery when things go wrong. For example, in a supermarket that have installed self-service checkout lanes, usually assign one employee to monitor the lanes. This practice combines security with customer assistance. So now there are there are several lanes when people they they, they make their payment, but then because there there are these queues, so they provide one employee who can manage the queues, the lanes. Most bank display a phone number at their ATMs giving customers direct access to a 24-hour customer service center where they can talk to a real person if they have questions or run into difficulties. So if, my, my, if, uh, if something is, uh, is not happening in the ATM, so th there is this number whereby people can contact the, the, the customer service center. And the third is, in telephone-based service systems, well-designed voicemail menus include an option for customers to reach a customer service representative. So the, as you might have seen in various banking, online banking and phone banking, etc. So they have interactive voice recording system. So you, they, they, will, they will tell you to welcome to this bank and press 1 for this, press 2 for this and press 9 for uh, to, to talk to our customer service representative. Next thing that we will talk about in this module is managing customer reluctance to change service. So increasing the customer's participation level in the service process or shifting the process entirely to self-service using SSTs require the firm to change the customer behavior. Now, this is often a difficult task as customers resent being forced to use SST. So now here the, the, the company is forcing the customers or wants the customer to change their process and that uh, is resented by the customer. So following ways can be used to address customer resistance to change, particularly when the innovation is a radical one. The more radical the innovation is, more reluctant the customer is to shift uh, to this SST. Now, there are several ways uh, whereby this resistance can be reduced. The first is to develop customer trust. It is more difficult to introduce productivity related changes when people are distrustful of the initiator. It is norm in the case of large, seemingly interpersonal institutions and customer willingness to accept change may be closely related to the degree of goodwill they will bear towards the firm. The second is understand customer habits and expectations. Customers have their own individual service script or flowchart in mind. So they have also timed it that uh, I will I'll go and then uh, do this and do, do this and, and then walk out and this will take so much time. So innovations that disrupt deeply rooted routines are more likely to face resistance. Assigning new processes more closely with customers' habits and expectations, enhancing the chance of success. So aligning new processes more closely with customers' habits and expectations enhances the chance of success. So that is why when we were looking at service process redesign, the customers were also, uh, also included in that so that they, this, uh, they, they can also give their inputs and, and, uh, and the, the redesign process should not be so that the customer's habits, they change drastically because that will, that will induce, uh, induce a barrier in the customers to use this SST. The third is pre-test new procedures and equipments. If service personnel are going to be replaced by automatic equipment, 
it is essential to create designs that customers of almost all types and backgrounds will find easy to use. Phrasing of instructions needs careful thought. Unclear or complex instructions may discourage customers with poor reading skills. And then there is a need to publicize the benefits. Introduction of SST requires additional work from customers as well as and also it confers benefits upon them. Additional work, customers have to perform part of the ta task themselves and the benefits that includes extended service hours, time saving and in some instances monetary saving also. So, these benefits are not necessarily obvious. They have to be promoted, they have to be told to the, uh, to the customers that if they shift to SST, these are the advantages. And the fifth is to teach customers to use innovations and promote trial methods. Assign service personnel to demonstrate new equipment and answer the questions. For web-based innovations, firms may consider to provide access to email, chat or even telephone-based assistance. Promotional incentives such as price discounts, loyalty points or lucky draws may also help to stimulate trial. The sixth is to monitor performance and continue to seek improvement. Introducing quality and productivity improvements is an ongoing process, especially for SST. So, we have to keep on continuing uh, uh, increasing the quality and productivity. It is important to monitor utilization, frequency of transaction failures and their fail points and customer complaints over time. Service managers have to work hard to continuously improve SST and keep up the momentum so that SST can achieve their full potential and not le left to be left to become white elephants. And in the end, and to conclude, so we started this discussion with the need of service process redesign, symptoms that reflect this need and the objectives achieved by carrying it out. Then we have talked about step steps involved were uh, then elaborated. Thereafter, we discussed the customer participation in the service processes and different levels of participation. Concepts like customers as service co-creators, use of SST, its adoption and associated advantages and disadvantages were also emphasized upon. Finally, customers reluctance to change and ways to address it was also covered. These are the three books from which the material for this uh, module was taken. Thank you.